Hi everybody, my name is Michael Yu. I'm a fourth year dental student at Western University in Pomona, California, and it is October 2021. That means it's that time of year again. Time for dental school interviews. Now this video isn't about all the tips and tricks that I can give you to ace your dental school interview, but it's more so rather on topics that you should know for your dental school interview. For the past two years, I've been doing dental school interviews and because I know some of my professors watch these videos, I'm not gonna give away any Western U secrets. However, over these past two years, I've noticed that there are certain topics that some pre-dental students don't know about. I really hope that this video will help you get a small introduction into those topics and hopefully helps you out if those topics come up during your dental school interview. So let's get into it. First off is interprofessional education, otherwise known as IPE. For the past few years, dental schools have been pushing this curriculum to promote interprofessional collaboration within the different healthcare fields. This means dentistry, optometry, medicine, all the different fields. What you need to know is if any dental interviewer asks you what IPE is and what it means to you as a future dental professional, you're gonna to have to be able to respond first by knowing what IPE is and having a good answer for it as well. If you'd like any more information on any of these topics, I'll link all the subjects down below in the description. I implore you to check them out if you would just like a little bit more information on these. Secondly, we have different specialties. Now, there have been a lot of changes within this subject alone within the past year. When I started dental school in 2017, there were only nine dental specialties. Now we have 12. So just to get technical for a second, I'm gonna list out all the different specialties. And of course, again, I'm gonna link everything down below. So dental public health, endodontics, oral and maxillofacial pathology, oral and maxillofacial radiology, oral and maxillofacial surgery, orthodontics and dental facial orthopedics, periodontics, prosthodontics, pediatrics, and here are three others. Dental anesthesiology, which was added in March 11th, 2019. The following year, oral medicine was added in March 2nd, 2020. And the, later that month, oral facial pain was added March 31st, 2020. Now, you don't need to memorize those dates, but if during an interview you're asked what specialty would you like to go into, you'll at least know that there are now 12 specialties rather than nine. And just by knowing that, you're already ahead of the game. Congratulations. Number three is a topic that came up in both of my dental school interviews, uh, periodontal disease and its many effects on dental health. Now, it's commonly known that periodontal disease, periodontitis, has a lot of effects on myocardial infarctions, heart attacks, and diabetes. Emerging evidence suggests that existence of a two-way relationship between diabetes and periodontitis. Now, this goes hand in hand with interprofessional education because if you do have a diabetic patient, you're gonna have to work hand in hand with their primary care physician in order to provide the best dental health care possible. What that means is if a person has a HbA1c above a seven, or in other words, their diabetes is uncontrolled, it's gonna be hard for them to heal. So you're not gonna to wanna to do like full mouth extraction on that patient, and you're not gonna to wanna to do anything that may further exacerbate their diabetic condition. And lastly on this topic, there's also news that periodontitis may have profound effects on COVID-19 hospitalizations. Now, this seems like a correlation is not causation type of thing, but it's still out there in literature. And it may be interesting for you to bring up during your interview. Speaking of COVID-19, there's been a lot of movement in dental licensure because of the pandemic. Before the pandemic, students were required to do a practical exam on a live human being. But since COVID-19 greatly reduced the ability to bring these live patients into the school in order for us to do our exam, states have been accepting mannequin-based exams, drilling on plastic teeth. Now for the past two years, they've been doing this as well. But before the pandemic, you should know that this was a big push by all dental students and dental schools to move from a live patient to a mannequin-based exam. Reason being is, say a dental student were to do a filling on a live patient and that student happened to fill that exam, what does it mean for that patient that now has a failing restoration or a failing filling in their mouth? The ethics behind that gets a little convoluted and that's why a lot of dental students have been pushing for these mannequin-based exams. If they're here to stay, I don't know, but it is still a topic for discussion and it's probably gonna come up either during your interview or sometime during your dental education. Lastly, we have mid-level providers. If anywhere in your application, you said that community service means a lot to you, and that providing access to care is at the core of who you are, you're gonna to have to know what dental health aid therapists are. Dental health aid therapists, otherwise known as DHATs or dental therapists, have tremendously helped rural areas provide access to care through teledentistry. Now, DHATs have been a contentious topic for the past few years within the dental field because the question about if they have enough education to actually carry out 
dental treatment is still up for debate. Dental health aid therapists are only required two years of dental education, but can do just about anything a dentist can do under the supervision of a dentist, of course. Now, if you live in a state like Washington State, Oregon, California, Arizona, or anywhere that really has a rural community, your dental board most likely took up this topic of whether or not they want to accept mid-level providers within the state. Again, this is a hot topic and it's still up for debate, but you should at least know what DHATs are. Thank you so much for sticking to the end of this video. If you found this video helpful, please share it with another pre dental student that you think it may help. And also, please leave a like and subscribe. It helps me out a lot. If any of these topics are confusing to you, or if you would like to just discuss them a little bit more, please leave a comment down below. And always, thank you so much for your support. Thank you.